I'm excited for today. So am I. So am I. So listen, uh, we're going to talk about how to hire, train, and manage your virtual assistant. Before we jump in here, it's, it's right at the top of the hour right now. And you're going to see my eyes kind of, I got two screens going here. So I'm looking at your guys' questions over here. I want you guys to check in for us. And so to do that, like find the GoToWebinar control panel. There's a little questions area on there. And I want you to type in uh, the answer to this question, okay? What in your business would you just get off your plate if you could, okay? Because, you know, look, as a real estate agent, you guys have a lot of stuff that you do every day, right? And as Daniel's going to get into in a little while, like some of this stuff directly produces income for your business and some of it does not. And we're going to talk about some case studies, some real life, like here's people who had just non-income producing activities on their plate and, and getting those off of their plate was able to, so Steve says calls, like Steve might not like making calls at all. He doesn't want to call his sphere. He doesn't want to call his leads. He doesn't, he wants to get that stuff off his plate. So we've got, as we go through here today, there's a lot of different stuff you guys could get off. Mike says the marketing, the social networking stuff. Uh, Kay says she'd like to get her expired program off her plate. Um, all the clerical and, and detail and follow-up stuff. I mean, these are all things that at some point in the past, some real estate agent has said, I don't want to be doing these things, right? And Daniel's going to get into like what you should be doing. So uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover here today. I appreciate all of you guys checking in and you guys are continuing to check in here. Jay says lead gen stuff. I'd like to get that off. Praffle says anything that's just not income producing. Um, Sherry says social media. I mean, again, all just really great things that we could absolutely find a way to get off of our plate. So deep breath for me. Now you get to see how excited I get about these things. I'm using my hands. I'm, uh, okay, so Daniel, um, Daniel Ramsey, he's the, the CEO of My Outdesk. I've known Daniel for a long time. And, you know, we use virtual assistants from My Outdesk in our tech business here. So the, the Active Rain business, Brivity, um, we've got some, really some people that I consider like employees, like family, like uh, just really great folks that work for us across the hall and i'm up here in bellingham so ben kinney's real estate team is across the hall from me they use a number of virtual assistants in their business my mom is an agent on ben kinney's team she has her own dedicated virtual assistant um, that she has as part of being part of the ben kinney team so i'm really familiar with kind of how you guys work uh daniel but why don't you launch in um take over i'm gonna kind of sit back on the side anybody that's been on these before knows i have a hard time keeping my mouth shut so i'll ask your guys questions if you guys fire questions in here at daniel as we're going along i'll pipe in with those i'll probably jump in and tell an anecdote or a story or reinforce something daniel's talking about based on the experiences that i've had so daniel take it away but i'm not going to be too far before i i love it bob are you are, are we still there I'm here. Okay, good. Thanks, everybody. I cut out for just a two two seconds, but I'm I'm really glad to be here. Um, Bob, you you hit on something that I'm super passionate about. If you work with my Outdesk, we call ourselves the Mod Family, and I just wanted to kind of uh, let everybody know when you hire one of our people, it's like they become family. And Bob kind of alluded to it, but it's one of our one of our core values is the my Outdesk Mod family table and it's a really big deal and it's part of what we do um, and today we're going to really talk about how to actually use leverage in your real estate practice and if you stick around we've got not only a bunch of free giveaways like 90 days of services for free um, we have a consultation that we're going to walk you through we're going to give you the entire slide deck that we're sharing today. We're also going to give you a virtual assistant hiring guide. If you came here, you obviously like want to get some things off your plate. So we're going to walk through a bunch of tools, a bunch of tips. We're going to talk about a bunch of stories. And I swear, just put your cell phones down, detach from Facebook, and give us your full attention because this is a, an example of working on your business and not in your business. If you can just be free, get a pad of paper, get ready because you're going to take notes and know that as we go along, we're going to drop a lot of nuggets and these nuggets can change your business forever. So my outdesk was started by me, a real estate broker. So this is a by brokers, for brokers, for agents. You guys are going to get a ton of value and I'm going to kick it off with just a quick story. 
Um, what I love about this story is you, you, you might say, what, what are you talking about? IBM? I'm a real estate agent. Like, why does IBM up here? But IBM actually went through this process where they almost went away. Not everybody knows this story, but back in the 90s, they actually had uh, like five different shifts of their leadership, and they kept struggling around generating revenue. They couldn't, they couldn't basically maintain their profit. They couldn't grow anymore. And at some point, they're like, okay, we're in this cycle of massive decline. And you guys might not be in massive decline. In fact, you might be in rapid growth or maturity. I don't know where you are in your business. But at this point, you know, IBM is in every um, country in the world. They have 100,000 employees, and they're in massive decline. They're having a uh, month-over-month decline in their revenue. And people, you know, it was a publicly traded company, so people were, like, exiting, selling their stock, and their stock price was plummeting. So what they do, they hired a consultant. Now, here's what's great about today. This is like hiring McKinsey because McKinsey came up with one problem. They spent six months analyzing what was going on with IBM's business. They went through processes, the procedures. They met with everybody who was a key player from, from the people who were secretaries all the way to the president of the companies and the VPs. And they spent six months doing, doing this massive, massive, massive consultation gig for IBM. And you know what they figured out? That their sales and marketing team was spending 60% of their day doing non-revenue producing tasks, meaning administrative stuff like paperwork and marketing and just stuff that wasn't important to growing the business. So IBM cuts a million dollar check and McKinsey walks into the room and says, you need to hire some assistants for your sales team. Thank you very much, cut my check for a million dollars. And I mean, it was like, this is amazing. And so today we're gonna, on this, on this call, break down how you might do an, the exact same process that McKinsey did for IBM, like a billion dollar across the world kind of uh, company. We're gonna do that same exact process today for you. So what's really important is there's three things. You can buy, build, and borrow talent. And you know what, uh, Bob, you had a story around like this with a, a, a cop friend of yours that I really, I really liked actually. What was that? It gets to the point of, um, you know, getting rid of those tasks that you have to do every day that don't lead you to kind of your highest and best use, which is, you know, income generation in your business. I have a good friend. He's a Seattle police officer, and he used to be a, a police officer with the Boise, uh, with the Highway Patrol in Idaho, but he was, he was based out of Boise. And um, he was on the DUI patrol both there and in Seattle. And in Seattle today, if you're a police officer and you pull somebody over for a DUI, you have to do all of the administrative paperwork all the way through, like including, you know, the writing the records, just everything that would, would happen as part of that process. When he was in Idaho, they had a staff, you know, a couple of folks and who handled that process for all of the officers that they had out there do, doing DUI patrols. So he said that in Boise, he could do six to eight DUI stops a night, uh, no problem, and he would get off after a shift and he would go home. He said in Seattle, he can do two DUI stops a night and all of the paperwork and all of the processes that go with those DUI stops, because he has to do them, that's it. He can do two. And he said half the time he's, he's working overtime to get those two done. And so, you know, from, the, from the, the state or the city levels, their perspective, like his revenue generating job is to be out there and, and for the safety of us, right? Pulling over <laughs> people who are under the influence. But he right. can only do that two times a night in Seattle, whereas when all that administrative work was off his plate, he could do it eight, six to eight times a night in Boise. So, I mean, and you guys know this already. You know you're doing stuff in your business that if you got it off your plate, you'd be more effective in, in those income-producing activities. Yeah, I love it, man. And it's, you know what's crazy is this is a business concept. We're not, I mean, regardless of what business you're in, whether you're, you're a government agency like a police department or IBM or a real estate company or a tech company like Active Rain, I mean, you guys use virtual assistants and yep. this just makes sense. And so what we're trying to do throughout this webinar is just simply have you guys think differently about leverage. And, and here's what leverage is. You can build, borrow, or buy leverage. And let me break these down. Like building means you have... You hire somebody who has potential but no track record, okay? Now, this is the least – I mean, this is 
the least expensive way, right? You're hiring somebody fresh out of college or maybe, you know, somebody who's never been in real estate before and you think they are a good fit. They have a lot of potential. Now, a lot of people do this in the real estate world and they, they have a bad, um, you know, they have a bad situation with that. But that's, that is definitely a strategy because there's a lot of teams that have great, um, you know, they have a great experience with building talent. So the next one is borrowing. And uh, in the real estate, the best example of borrowing talent is like a, a transaction coordinator for $300 or $400, right? I mean, this happens across the country every single day. Um, and the next one is buying talent. And here's the difference. In the buy talent, they have a proven track record, something that you can actually, you can actually verify that they did that work. And the beauty is, if, with that proven track record, they could be 100% up to speed in 60 to 90 days. And so at my odd desk, we really like the buy talent, buy the proven track record. And that's what you do when you hire us. And some of the best places to find um, talent, um, wildly enough, and Bob, I don't know if you, you, you've experienced this. I mean, you really have to think about what you want what, and what examples of the type of talent you want, and then make sure they're in these different categories but I love online, I like calling your sphere, I like using your vendors, like the people that you do work with, I like using Facebook, you know, Craigslist is, I mean, crazy as, as it sounds, Craigslist is a great place to find talent, but make sure, and this is the, this is the piece that everybody, if you're listening, this is the thing that matters, you got to know which one you're doing, because each of these calls for a different onboarding structure. They, it, it's a different time uh, period to get them up to speed. It's a different set of expectations. Different, and so it's just risk. There's different yes. risk involved in that, right? Like if I'm building it from on, based on someone's potential, there's a lot more risk there than if I'm buying somebody with a proven track record. That's right. And, you know, if you're building, you have to have really sharp um, systems and processes built into your business so that you know when somebody – and you need to have a track record, right? So I've built – talent before and we have a process that gets them up to speed over time right and so if you've done it enough you know if i have a build strategy then you know this particular position takes six months before i know they're 100 percent providing value but if you don't know that for sure it's not fair to the talent or the person that you're hiring to say well i did it and and this is an important thing it took me three three weeks to figure out how to do real estate. Well, you're the business owner. That's why you own the business. And most people aren't going to be like you. In fact, they're employees, and by definition, they're going to have a completely different experience. So it's just really super important, and I'm, I'm glossing over this. But this is part of the things that we're going to help you guys go through if you decide to have a discovery call with us. We're going to walk through these different um, strategies when you're hiring. Um, now – Bob and I were talking, and this is a funny one, right? We're going to talk about talent versus non-talent, um, and I'm just going to read off the non-talent, a couple of non-talents, but everybody who's on this webinar, pay attention here because you might hear somebody that you're currently in business with, like it doesn't know what they want and isn't searching, requires you to push them. That's one that um, – is a frustrating thing. But Bob, you had something funny about this particular slide, right? I would show everybody here like this, that, where is it? Oh, so see that, that banner with the dark blue top and the, and the light blue bottom? That is this. I mean, it's literally this slide like on our wall here in the Ben Kinney companies. And this is something that we, well, we spend a lot of time trying to find talent. And I mean, the, the, there's actually a little bit of word, different wording, like talent finds solutions, non-talent brings problems. Um, talent pushes you, non-talent requires pushing, right? I mean, that's in there, but I mean, these concepts, like every single day in our business, when, we, when we're looking to hire somebody, like we are doing it based on this, right? Yeah. And it, but, like Daniel said, you guys, I, I guarantee somebody on this call, if not many people on this call are in business with somebody who falls into the left-hand column. And right. they probably like aggravate you and you go home at night and you're like, oh, this person, like, what, what am I going to do? Like, I, you know, like how many of you just check in for me right now? Who's in business with somebody in the left-hand column? And, and yeah. listen, go ahead, Daniel. No, I was just, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm here with a friend and he's a really successful real estate guy. He actually sold his practice, which is unbelievable um, in the real estate world. I mean, there's only a handful of people. Ben could sell his practice, but there's, 
really real estate is a hard business to sell to somebody else and he sold his business and now he's doing a lot of contribution things and he had uh, one of his one of the folks that works for him text him you know well uh, because he couldn't join a conference call and so that that person texts him well good luck watching the the eclipse you know uh, we'll just keep here in the office and work hard you know not everybody has the chance and this is an employee that works for this guy his name is Tim and and so I'm I look at the non talent you know piece of this side and I think man uh, this guy is not a person I want to be in business with right he's instead of telling Tim hey Tim have a great time watching the solar eclipse yeah, with your family this, we got this covered back here yeah we got this man uh, that that person is like holding on to some stuff so if you like Bob said if you have somebody on your team that you're thinking about like do they are they on the non-talent or talent um, side I would definitely um, comment here and, and give us your experience I'm not um, if if people are commenting, like, I can't see. I don't know if you guys could maybe make oh. me a, an organizer or something. Like, I saw the questions earlier, but I'm not seeing anything else after K's. You must be Italian, which I, I don't know if I'm Italian. I'm a mutt, okay? <laughs> I love it. Um, so this is the non-talent versus talent, and, and the place to identify this is in the interview process. And so, it, I, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but I like, to, I like to look for these folks and do the little check marks. Yep pushes you constantly, I see that. And, and the way you do that is you just ask questions that are open-ended, that are about like, tell me a time when you really looked for a solution within your business and you found a problem and you found the solution and you were going and you were rocking and rolling. Um, those kind of conversations are awesome for determining whether or not this is talent or non-talent on your team. One thing, the hiring process is broken, um, this is, leadership IQ study we've got some really great stats um, this one blows my mind because 46 percent of hires fail in their first 18 months like that's a staggering number right it's almost half and so it's really a, a place if you're trying to build a really big business one of the challenges in doing that is hiring the right folks it's like it's the challenge in scaling your business is getting people on your on your team that push you and really want the same things and you know are in love with your vision and, and willing to help you get there and so in in this slide it's just it's kind of um, disheartening right and part of today's conversation is going to walk you through like how do you determine what the job description is how do you know you know how long it's going to take to get somebody up to speed and how do you avoid making this kind of a mistake because and here's the true cost uh, you know, 41% of companies say that it costs them 25,000 to hire the uh, uh, have a mishire, right? And then 25% of people say it's 50,000. I mean, $50,000 to a real estate company. I don't know about you guys, but that's a big loss, right? Um, you know what's funny? I think there, there's like this whole concept of um, I made the wrong hire. Right, but I, I think just as much what plays into this, and you mentioned it a minute ago, saying that like you guys help them, you know, build a job description and do these things. Just as much of the fault of a failed hire is on the person making the hire, right? It's it's I didn't have systems in place in my business to plug somebody into. It's I didn't I didn't give them a proper job description, so when they came on, they didn't know what to be doing every day, right? So it's it's not always we made a bad hire because we hired a bad person. Sometimes it's we made a bad hire because we weren't ready necessarily. And so I, I appreciate what you guys do as far as, you know, sitting with an agent and talking through like, what is your business and what are your income producing? What are your not? What do you want to get off your plate? And really kind of understanding like why we're making this hire, right? And we've made this failure in our business here on the brevity side or the active range side of the house a number of times where we hired somebody that probably would have been successful had we been more prepared to hire them. Yeah. Well, you know, I we've just onboarded three new salespeople and in in our business, and 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 when I say sales, they're the people that are licensed real estate agents who come from the business, have a history of giving giving these kind of consultations, right? And the reality is, you know, they're they're going to be here a month or two before they ever get to a consultation, and then they're not going to be able to do a consultation on their own for the first three months and and really it's not going to be until six months before we're going to be able to really know if they're going to be able to help people because we're never going to um we're never going to turn loose brand new people on that haven't been trained 
on our clients like you guys. If you decide to come to us, we're going to take care of you, and that's a commitment that we have. And so you not, not only do you have to have the right systems and processes, you have to be willing to have a burn rate before those people are successful of three to six months. And that's another thing that is really, really important is that when you hire someone, you can't be like, okay, tomorrow you're gonna be producing revenue for me or tomorrow you're gonna take all the tasks off because I hired you today. I mean, Bob, it takes time and planning. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And okay, so if, if here's and the time and planning, this is the part, this is the meat and potatoes of today's call. Um, is to understand what you can and you cannot give away. So if you get nothing out of today's, this, this next couple of slides are the meat and potatoes of this, of this call. And here's how you do it. There's dollar productive activities and non-dollar productive activities, right? And I wanted to give a visual outline for people to understand the differences and then also the different categories in each of these. And so a, a Lisa Archer, who you'll hear about a little bit later in this presentation, good friend of ours, a, a client, she actually took it to another level and said, look, I have a way, I, I just use sticky notes. And so throughout a week or two of my business, what I'll do is I'll have everybody on my team for a two week process, every quarter, write down throughout the day with the date at the top and what they did whether it was non-revenue generating or revenue generating, and then they, or, then they spend two weeks doing this, and then they actually, and they do it with different pens, right? And then they throw it up on a whiteboard. And each person within her company does this. And it's, the, the concept here is that instead of spending 20% of your day doing the things that drive revenue, you're gonna spend 80% of your day doing the things that drive ready, revenue, and the other 20% are non-revenue producing activities, right? And so we're flip-flopping that. It's the same, it's the same concept as Bob's buddy who's who's keeping our streets safe by pulling over those DUI guys. It's the same concept that McKinsey got a paid a million bucks to just say you should hire some assistants. It's a business concept. And so they do that um, up on a screen, and every quarter they're analyzing what they're doing on a on a quarter, on a daily basis, so that they can stay focused on the dollar productive activities. Now, I, I, we've taken it to a new level because as you scale a business, whether it's a real estate business, a technology business, or any other kind of business, there are legacy things that can be non-dollar productive and there are non-legacy, which are just repeatable tasks. And, and the legacy thing would be like build out a talent management system, right? So you're constantly getting leads coming in the door for new talent to come onto your, onto your system. This is a non-dollar productive activity because it doesn't actually produce revenue. And when I say a system, right, you, you know, this is the post, this is where you apply, these are the, these are the, this is how we're gonna phone screen, this is how we're gonna do an in-person um, interview, these are the tests that we're gonna give them. So it's like building out the process, right? The action of actually interviewing those people or spending time with a talented person that you're trying to onboard well, that's a dollar productive activity when you're scaling a business. But building out a system for that or building out a referral system or building out your CRM. Bob, this is the one of my favorite things is there's only one way to sell a real estate company and that is to have a CRM, a database where ha half or more of your business is coming from your sphere and coming from referrals and it's systematic and it's repeatable and it's and it's and it's I mean, it's just, that's it. There's nothing else in the real estate world that's worth selling. And so this is an area right now, if you're on this call and you don't have a CRM, you don't have a referral program, you don't have a talent management system, you are in need of some help on the, on the non-dollar productive activities. Does that make sense, Bob? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking like, our, we, we have a talent management system. We actually, at some point hired somebody to, to build that and, and put it together and you know, at the end of the day, like you said, when somebody comes in here to sit down to see if we're going to hire them, Ben Kinney's in the room with them, right? He's not leaving that to somebody else because that is the dollar producing activity is really identifying, is this person going to work with me? Are they, do they have the talent that we think we've screened along the way and gotten them to this point? They haven't slipped through somehow, right? But he's the one that ultimately does it. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes a ton of sense to me. Sure. Well, and, and, and there's another way to look at that, this too, is the non-legacy stuff and the legacy stuff. I mean, 
these are all important things for a real estate person to know that they need and, and to put on a, a strategic business plan, right? So at some point, I'm going to build this referral program. At some point, I'm going to build out the CRM. And at some point, you know, I got, I've got create standards and procedures, right? Those are all legacy things um, that need to be done, but they don't have to be done by the real estate agent. You can hire a really amazing operations person to help do that take your plan and implement it. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about. Um, and you see the dollar productive, everybody knows, networking events, sales presentations, negotiating with clients and vendors, prospecting for new clients, working your referral network. I mean, these are the things that drive revenue. And I'm sure I left out some, and this isn't gonna be the same for everybody, right? Wherever you're, whatever type of real estate business you're doing, whatever kind of, if it's even if it's a technology business, the, the activities are gonna be different, but this, um, what we call like the leverage inventory or the leverage T. This is a really great tool. So I think you should use it. We have one more that I like and it's simple, right? Real, real quick, before you go on to that, go back to that next slide for me for a second. Cause so um, my wife would tell you that anytime it's possible for me to slip this into conversation, I'm going to do, I was on the math team in high school, right? <laughs> and, and now I can't even add like, you know, two, three digit numbers together, but that's beside the point. Um, so my brain works in like charts and graphs and these kinds of things. And so like when we owned our, our real estate brokerage, we, we would get agents who they'd have um, three or four deals in a month, right? Which means they had been focusing on those income production activities to get them to that point. But what happens is when, when you're doing more on the left side there and you're getting more income producing activities happening and you start to get deals coming in, right? What, what immediately happens is the stuff on the right, more of that stuff needs to get done, right? So in general, it's administrative tasks, right? That covers that non-legacy administrative task covers a lot of stuff, but it's, it's inputting the listing and it's, it's managing the listing, it's communicating to the sellers, it's do, doing all that stuff that you do as an agent that's not in the income producing side, right? right. And so as you get more deals, that stuff gets more. And so what, what I mean, this is it. It's almost inevitable if you don't have leverage somewhere in your business is you get to this point, three, four deals, maybe you're awesome. Like my mom's an awesome real estate agent. She can do, she can do 12 of these, right? Or, or 15 without any help, but still she's going to get to a point where she can't do any more. And then what happens? She stopped doing the income producing activities. You just focus on the administrative tasks and you have these peaks and valleys in your business. And, right. and anybody who's a single agent running a business like if you're not having peaks and valleys we want to know your secret sauce right because it's just it's inevitable because as i get more deals i get more tasks and administrative stuff that i have to do and then i start doing that and, and i do less of this stuff on the left and it's these peaks and valleys in my business yeah you know i would add the the fun i mean bob and i we, we have this real estate background but the challenge and the fun is that when we get paid we're immediately fired and that's a challenge, man. I mean, you get a closing, the clients are really happy, and then you get a check, and then you're like, okay, now what? I got to go find more. And what I'm, what Bob, his story is like, don't think like that. Go find more every single day. And then hire, keep leverage, um, you know, on your team and do it over time. And so I, I love that. I mean, it's the only industry where we get fired. <laughs> and paid on the same day you know it's just it's just a challenge um the next slide i i really like this too because if you're a if you've been in real estate a while if you already have a team if, if you already have some leverage and you're thinking about doing this this is another good one um look everything that you don't like and you're not good at don't do everything that you don't like and you're good at don't do so what we say is Everything at the bottom of this, you just simply, as the as the leader, as the visionary, as the real estate professional, you know, as as the rainmaker, since we're an active rain, right? Um, you just don't do those things, and you can just list these out, man, because there are things that I don't like that I'm really good at. There are things that I like that I'm good at, and there are things that I love and I'm great at. The more you can do at the top left hand side of this, like w this equation, I mean. The more you do up there, the more revenue will come, the more positive. I mean, Bob, you said something before we, we got going. You won't, like, you won't come in and kick your dog at night. 
<laughs> if, you're doing, if you're doing the stuff at the bottom, like it, it doesn't just wear on your business. Like it wears on your life, right? You go home, you're you're aggravated, your kids, you don't want the kids around, you don't, you know, you don't want to go out and have dinner with your friends and you kick the dog, right? I mean, I obviously I joke there, but you're just you're not happy if you're living in the bottom of this. And it reflects everywhere, especially in your business. Well, and there's another piece of this is that, like, I thought when I was new at, at real estate, I thought I had to do it all. Like, I, I literally, and I don't know if you guys are thinking this or you're like, well, they're not going to do it good enough, not to my standard, not to the way I like it. Um, but the reality is, you know, it takes energy, the good kind of energy, the positivity. The, if you're doing stuff that you hate – and that you're not good at, I mean, you just you just can't live in that space. You just can't live at this. In fact, this is wrong. It's like don't like and good and don't like and not good. I mean, like I would actually call this don't like and I hate it. You know, like I hate doing those things. And so the point is, yes, as a real estate person, you probably can do everything, but you just shouldn't um, for the benefit of your family, for the benefit of your health, for the benefit of – the people you're in business with, your clients, stick to the love and great or at minimum, the like and good. And so this is, all of those tools are to get us thinking ab about leverage differently. Um, here's what Alvin, a Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And, and I think this is such a great thing because Compound interest is, is pretty much the same thing as compound leverage. See, once you delegate a task, you create a process and a procedure, and you give that task away, you get your time back. So if it's transaction coordination, the average time to do a file is like 10 to 15 hours, right? So if you never do another transaction coordination file again, you just got 15 hours of your life back every time you close a transaction. And once you've hired somebody for it, you get that time back for the rest of your life. Once you've created a process for it, you get it back for the rest of your career. And I think it's just such a big deal because people don't understand that. And they go in and out of doing all these remedial tasks. I mean, Brivity is another great Ben Kinney um, product. And that should be ran by one of our people, period. Hands down, doesn't matter. MLS input, creating the flyers, doing all the online and social media stuff. I mean, at the beginning of this call, we heard of all the things. Like all of those things should be done by a virtual assistant. There, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind about it. And then you can stay focused around the things that really matter for your business. Um, and, and I really think there's some best practices here. Um, Bob, feel free to jump in. This is that part where, you know, we talked about as a business person, you have to sometimes work in your business, but working on your business is creating structure and procedures. So that's what we're going to go over right now. Um, steps one through five are really the process that my outdesk will help you through. Whether you're hiring a physical assistant or a virtual assistant, or maybe an operations person to build out your legacy stuff. I mean, whatever you're doing, this is the process. So the first thing is just prioritize the job skill set. Like know exactly what you need before you start beginning the search. And then write an inclusive job description. We have millennials, we have young folks, we have we have um, women entering the entering the job force at record numbers, going to college at record numbers. So you just have to make sure that this is an inclusive job description, and realize that a job description is for you and the employee, but the job um, the job posting that you put out into the world needs to actually be a marketing piece. I mean. That's a big deal right there. What, what I just said is, look, the job description is for you and the applicant or you and the employee and the advertisement, the job posting is actually an advertisement speaking directly to the talented person that you want to fill that role. So that's a big deal. Identify like the blind resume review, how you're going to decide who should move on to a phone to, to a phone interview and, and maybe an in-person interview and maybe a maybe a um, you know doing a personality profile maybe getting a, a skill test so you identify who's going to get to the next step then you create your structured interviews like how many interviews are you going to do what are the questions that you're going to ask and then you actually score the candidate 
as in real time as you're meeting with them across all of your different hiring factors. And so you're giving them feedback and process, but this is the entire process for going through a great hire. And this is what, when we were talking about like creating a legacy process for hiring people, this is exactly the formula. So we, and I'll just, I'll give you guys a pitch here because when we hired uh, Noel, Karen, Sheree, I've got virtual assistants from my out desk. You guys kind of helped us through most of these steps, right? Like we basically got to the point where you guys, we told you what we wanted, what skills we were looking for. You guys did all of the filtering of this stuff. And then you essentially gave me, um, I think the first time I ever sat down, we were going to hire one person. I believe we had, it was either three or four people that I got to interview. So, right. so I got to sit down in a video interview. I got to talk to them. I got to ask them questions. You know, you guys had sent me a bunch of stuff about them before, personality profiles, disc assessments, um, writing samples, all this stuff that I was able to, to consume before I ever got to the in-person interview. So you guys helped us through those, those first couple of steps, right? And then we got to do a, an interview with them. And I think you guys even had given us some questions to ask. And we had our own questions that we asked them. But, you know, it, it made the process so much easier because I didn't have to handle all – like, we didn't at that point have a – a, a hiring legacy process in place, right? We do now today, many years later, but we didn't then. And so you guys really helped us through that. And we just got to be at the point where I was speaking with Noel, speaking with Karen, speaking with Sheree, who, you know, there's a couple other people we spoke with during that time that we didn't end up hiring, but um, it, it really simplified these steps for us. Well, and, and, and this process is like a best practice inside the talent acquisition you know industry right but we do this for our clients we're like the easy button when it comes to talent we'll do all of this process for you and then you just get an interview and go forward but the important thing is you know we're doing it for virtual assistants we're doing it for like three different service levels like marketing administrative task and then call somebody mentioned you know prospecting as one of the things they'd like to get off their plate but we do it for those three things and we do it really, really well. We, we know the profiles, we know what the job descriptions, we know what their previous experience needs to look like. So if we're hiring like a transaction coordinator, which is one of our, like this is one of our badass strengths as a company is to help give you administrative and marketing people. We know what they need to look like because we've done this literally, Bob, you're gonna go crazy. We've done this for 4,000 real estate companies, okay? We're in our ninth year. We've, uh, and we didn't have it figured out in the beginning either. Like, like Active Rain and, and Bob, I mean, we didn't know all of this nine years ago. We, we were just like, uh, you know, hoping and praying, you know, this was our process. I hope this one will work out. <laughs> I mean, that's not the way to run a business. And we now know that. So we'll help you through this process. And, and, and here's how we help people. Okay. So we've, we've called this slide a discovery call because it's important for you to have somebody who's done this before be an advocate for you through this process. And we've broken um, every real estate company into three um, kind of different sections and we call them stages, right? Very similar to KW stuff with uh, seven levels um, uh, of real estate. We, we have a bit of a twist on it based on our folks because it's, it's, it's kind of got a real estate, my out desk focus, but we've got these three things. So if you're in the I do it space, you don't need leverage yet. You're learning the business. You're understanding how to take a listing. You're understanding how to generate listing leads. Oops, I moved forward. Um, you're understanding how to negotiate with buyers and sellers. You're, under, you're building a CRM. If you're in the I do it space and you, you're a single agent, you probably, you need to hire, um, you need to borrow talent. You need to take the borrow talent um, kind of uh, playbook and you know find a transaction coordinator and pay them a fee see if you can give them your listing transaction, your listing coordination too. You need to borrow, borrow talent as much as possible and I do it because really it wouldn't be fair to onboard somebody when you don't have your stuff together. But at some point you're at the we do it, meaning you've built a team, you've got your first assistant or maybe your first buyer's agent or maybe a listing partner. And in the we do it, your, your focus is systems and processes. 
and standards. Creating standards is such a big deal in the we do it space because everybody's a team. You're still working in the business. You're still in there at a day to day. And we define the we do it stage. If you're making $200,000 in GCI all the way up to about 750 or so, um, it's right before the million dollar GCI kind of mark, right? That, that is the we do it kind of stage and you're building systems and processes. Your, your focus there is being um, as active as possible in getting listing leads. Like your number one thing there is generating quality listing leads for your business and, and also hiring a team to help you with that. So in that space, that's where we help. And then there's this they do it. If anybody's on this webinar and let's say you're, your GCI is a million and you're about to, you're, 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 you know, you're going to that $2 million mark. Like we can still help you. If you don't have virtual assistants right now, um, if you're building out multiple streams of revenue, like the they do it space is focused on wealth, wisdom, the people on your team and creating a vision. Now a vision is important in all three of these different stages or different um, spaces of your business, but in the they do it, it's, 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 it's almost paramount. You have to have one that's inclusive, that everybody gets behind and really is a part of. Daniel, and let so, me ask you a question. So yeah. somebody here earlier, who was it? Because it, it was a great question. It was kind of a, a nebulous question, but I think it gets to this slide. The question, I can't see who, did, who asked it. The question was, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? That's what, that's what he typed in there. And I think it gets to like, this, this transition from I do it to we do it, yes. right? And you're saying like, if you're in this I do it scenario, you might not be ready for a virtual assistant. You might be better off to go out and, and um, borrow talent, maybe just get a transaction coordinator at first. But th there is this spot where I go from I do it to we do it, right? And it's generally that first hire. And that first hire could absolutely be a transaction or a, a virtual assistant. And so, like, how do I know when I'm ready to make that transition from I do it to we do it, you know, short of, let's say, 200,000 GCI? What if I'm at 150,000 GCI, but I know, man, if I can just get a bunch of this stuff off my plate, or I'm at 100,000 in GCI, I can just get a bunch of this stuff off my plate, like, I feel like I'm ready to go. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Like, how, how do you make that transition? Yeah, such a great question. I'm so glad for the, the person in the audience that answer, or asked that question. Here's the defining difference. In the I do it space, you have to have nailed listing presentations, meaning 90 something percent of the time, when you go into a listing, you get that listing. Number two, you have to have a CRM built out. Look, uh, here, whether you think it's a chicken or an egg, it doesn't really matter, but the step one in a business is hire a CRM. It's a systematic process to um, create leverage inside of your business. Leverage doesn't have to be people. Leverage can be systems. Leverage can be technologies like, you know, like uh, Brevity and Active Rain and communities, places where you can get um, an understanding or a learning. So you've, you've nailed listings. You know how to get them. You know how to win them when you go to a, a listing appointment. Number two, you've built out a CRM meaning all of your your day-to-day -day tasks are inside the CRM. It's not an Excel spreadsheet. You're not using Outlook. It's a real CRM. Brivity is a great example of, of, of one that would work. Um, and then number three, you have a written business plan and goals. Okay, so <laughs> this, this is probably, Bob, this is the killer. You have to have a strategic plan for what you're going to do. If I bring the person on and I don't, then they're, they flounder with me. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, you guys, it's like you guys are figuring it out on your own. And then the challenge is that person has no equity in your business. They, I mean, they, they're not there to take risks. They're an employee. Whether, so whether you hire a virtual assistant with us or, or somewhere else or a physical employee, look, you're taking their family's livelihood into your own hands. This is a big deal. I mean, you know, we save lives. When, when our virtual assistants work for us, not only do they do a conference a year, in fact, I'm flying to the Philippines in a couple weeks to do their conference. Uh, we give them vacation time. We give them health care. That health care saves lives within our, within our business. And they only get it when they get and keep a client. So if you're like, ah, you know, I kind of want to try this thing. Well, that's no good for you. And it's also 
um, you know, not creating good stuff in the world. Like you're not being a positive force for good in the world. And that's why we do these kind of webinars. I'm super passionate about helping people. But look, in the I do it space, um, you know, you, you've got to have the CRM, you've got to win listings, and you need to have a plan, a written plan uh, for how you're going to tackle growth and what you're going to do around that. And if you don't know how to do that, you should hire a coach to help you. And that's another example of, in the I do it, gaining leverage that isn't an employee. It's like, well, a co and I hear all the excuses, well, a coach is very expensive. You know, the thing about real estate is you don't have to make it up. You don't have to have your own exclusive, um, uh, you know, playbook. You can borrow from other people. Ben and I used to travel around and do REOs together. And he and I, when we first started doing them back in 2008 and 2009, we had no idea what we were doing. Like absolutely no idea, but we found a, a friend in Southern California who crushed the REO space, knew it because he had a friend in Florida. And so the reality is, look, if you don't, in the I do it space, you're learning how to do things. And the best way to learn is to get a coach or find a mentor. One, if you have all those things, then you definitely should have an employee. You definitely should hire a uh, call us because you know in that 150 to 250 range we probably can remove some stuff from your plate and really accelerate your growth i know that that's a possibility but if you have those things um and you're ready then we jump into the we do it spot and then it becomes executing like a and and i want to help with a vision piece because it's so big here bob it's like the one of the biggest things that people miss inside the real estate I have a lot of friends like Ben that are the largest brokers across the country. Like the number one, two, three, and six person in the entire world are clients of ours. And what I, what I admire and love about their business is they don't count success in how many transactions they did or what their GCI is. I mean, they know those numbers, but their success is how many families they've helped find their dream home. And, and that's an example of creating a vision in the we do it space that everybody on your team can get around and really you can grow your team and, get, and start scaling. Our, so our vision at the Ben Kinney Companies is delivering the dream of home ownership everywhere. And so that's not just in like his real estate business, that applies to active rain, it applies to brevity because we're helping agents be able to, to do more business and, and, and deliver that dream of home ownership to their clients. And so that's our vision. Yeah, well, and I love it. And so oh, if you're, if there. you're, if you're, sorry guys. Um, I was hearing a little bit of a reverberation, but if, if, if you're in this space, whether you're an I do it, we do it, or they do it, and you want help understanding, because I'm just brushing on all of these different topics, because within each of these, there are two different stages, which in each of those two different stages, you have different core challenges, you have different um, things that are going on inside your business, and every market is, is different, right? You might talk to a person in LA who does 10 transactions, but guess what? They're $5 million um, houses. So he has a completely different question than an, or, or a different business than somebody on the East Coast who is in a vacation rental place, right? So if you're curious about how this works, we have what's called the seven figure agent roadmap, which not only will tell you where you are today in terms of the I, we, and they do it and what stage you're in, but what your core drivers are, what's important. We're gonna do a, a breakthrough design where we help you with the revenue thing. Um, we really you know, look at what your dollar productive activities are. We're gonna go through what your current org chart is and then what your future org chart is. I mean, we're basically giving you guys a free coaching call on leverage just because you called us. And there's no money involved. We don't charge for it, although I think it's about a thousand dollar value. We don't. Uh, charge for it at all we call it a discovery call you can jump on our website or you can go to the landing page but we're just going to cause you to think differently about how your business is going to play out in the next three to five years and there's this quote that i really love that is kind of systematic inside the real estate world um, most real estate people will um, overestimate what can happen in one year but underestimate what can happen in five years so getting a three to five year plan put together, knowing what your future org chart's gonna look like, knowing what your dollar productive activities are gonna be like in each of these different categories. This is what the seven figure agent roadmap is. 
you know, getting the right systems in place so you have leverage within the systems, um, get, making sure you're hiring rights the first time and not getting a non-talented person, driving down the moral of your company, driving down the production of you, causing you stress and energy. Like these are the things that we're going to help um, do when you come to us. Bob, anything there you want to wrap up? <laughs> no, it feels good. I love it. Yeah, so I want to introduce some of our clients, um, mostly because one of the biggest um, questions they get is like, what, like, so what can they actually do? Like, uh, Bob says he has a bunch, and Ben, Kenny, I mean, literally, I think all of Ben's companies have like 30 or 40 of our virtual assistants. So, you know, what can they do? And I want you to meet Toral. I love Toral because she's in the they do it space, um, and it's a great example. A couple years ago, she started. She had this, you know, realization that if she, you know, if, if you don't have an assistant, then you are one. And she was very much, you know, she's a mother in a relationship, a huge team, crushes it on the referrals. Like I think in the last eighteen months, she's had close to seven hundred referrals, which is just amazing, or some crazy number like that. And, and what she says now is anything that can be done virtually should be done virtually. And I love that mindset. She has four of our virtual assistants and um, she literally is out of production. She's like Ben, she just looks for talent. Um, she has 12 salespeople, four of our virtual assistants, two, two folks are, are primarily focused on the administrative side, um, one person on the marketing side and one person on the call side. And Toral is just killing it on referrals. She has a great CRM. She has 12 salespeople. And her virtual assistants do everything from like marketing the property to the transaction of coordination to the listing of the, of the properties in MLS to even tracking the success of her referral program in an Excel spreadsheet that breaks down revenue per agent on her team from referrals and from their own sphere of business. And then also the leads that she provides to her agents. And, and a virtual assistant basically gives her a monthly scorecard on her team to see who is doing well and who isn't. She's entered in a new phase of her life where she has a ton of free time and she coaches the people on her team rather than be in production. So I really love what Toral's got going on. Um, everybody knows Tristan Ahumada. He, um, he's, he does the lab coat agents. He has two of our ISAs with us. And he, uh, he just recently added another virtual professional for lab coat agents. So when you're on that, that, um, I guess that, that group, yeah. yeah, the Facebook group, I mean, our virtual assistant is typically the one facilitating the conversations, providing value. Um, they do everything from editing videos to creating Facebook posts to writing content, graphics. Um, I mean, it's nuts what we can do from a social media and marketing perspective. And, and what's, what's awesome about what our virtual assistant helped um, Tristan do is in all of his businesses, he has multiple, we've given him a complete streamlining of his branding. So all of the, all of his logos, all of the videos have an intro and an outro. All of his Facebook stuff is done really in a new level, a professional level. And I know Bob, you, this is what you use a lot of our folks for too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For what, sure. What, what's been your experience on that? Well, I, I guess <laughs> Here's here's my experience. Like, and Noel's my my guy, right? Like, he's the one that I work most closely. Well, I work with Karen too, but Noel does a lot of our active brain stuff and our, our videos from these calls. And and um, my experience has been that I can just give him things. Like, he's talented, right? I I don't have to give him instruct. I can just say, hey, here's this thing I want. Here's the outcome I want at the end. Like, do this. And he right. just does it, right? Like, he might have a question here or there just for clarification or something. But, and then I can trust at the end of the day, like it got done, like he's accountable. So, I mean, <laughs> but in Ben's business, I see them, um, you know, like you said, there, there's 30 or 40, and this is across his eight different expansion locations and, and some of their brokerages. And you know, he's got a big world that, that he lives in, but um, there's a level of consistency in the work that gets done by, by folks um, that, you know, you, you may find if you hire talented people, but we didn't necessarily have to do all of that searching to get talented people. Like you guys surface talented people for us and we were able to take advantage of that. Well, and here's the thing. You guys are not in the talent acquisition business. Like 
your not business. Yet. You no, be, but you're not yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are in the real estate, like the home ownership business. You're 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 affecting home ownership on a massive level, and that's your core thing. That's what you want to do. Let us do the leverage stuff, or yeah. or let another company do the leverage stuff because it's it's a really complicated thing. And if you don't have all your ducks in a row, you're causing bad in the world. And and like Tristan and like Bob on the call. Like you, you just want to get good people doing good outcomes for your business, and that's what we're going to help with. Um, now, Lisa, um, we're going to go into. We don't have a ton of time left, but I'm going to go into how she's actually leveraged a virtual assistant with us, and she does it on the referral and open house strategy. Um, she does this. It's a it's a really easy process, and I'm going to share that process with you. But basically, last year she did 165 deals, and 41 of those deals came from this very simple strategy. She has three of our virtual assistants, using them every for everything on her team, short of like on the open house part, short of door knocking and actually sitting the open house. And so this is what she does with our virtual assistants. So she selects an open house, she posts that online, obtains a call list, mails invites out to the hundreds of homes around that open house, posts it online again, begins calling the neighborhood. Now here's a big deal. On day three, she begins to have her virtual assistants calls the neighborhood and invite them to find their next neighbor. So I want all my friends to live in my neighborhood because then their kids can play, right? And so she's inviting people in the neighborhood through calls from our virtual assistants and, and basically saying, hey, do you want to pick your next neighbor? Um, Sidens go in the yard, that's day three, posts it again online, continues to call neighbor, neighborhood, invites the database, so she's calling everybody in her database. She goes through all the different sign calls that she's ever had, all the other open houses that she's ever registered um, anybody with, and any internet lead who's, who's related to this open house. Day five, posts online again, boosts the social, social media posts, prepares the open house folder with marketing stats, comps, digital flyers, posts again online, social media store, uh, uh, posts again. And here's what happens on day, day six. She actually door knocks. And so that's the one thing that the virtual assistant can't help with. And then day seven, if she didn't do door knocking, she says, do it, set up the signs, minimum of seven in the neighborhood, and then go door knocking. Okay. And with this process, like literally every time she opens an expansion team, every time she goes um, into a new market, this is the thing that they use in order to break into that market. She's not paying for fancy a fancy lead generation t thing. She's not going to Zillow and say, hey, give, I'm going to give you $5,000 to buy some leads. She's doing this one simple, silly strategy, having her virtual assistant do almost 99% of it. And, and this is how she's crushing uh, her world with, with our virtual assistants. I want to talk to you about this. And this is, this is a, a, a very visual slide, and I wanted it here to, to help people through like when you when you think about doing this, there's not a huge amount of risk, right? Um, I've I've seen Ben talk, I and and the one thing that always stuck with me is you're not risking a ton of money because you're going to keep them accountable to what their job description is and the activities that they plan to do inside that job description. So two to four weeks out of hiring, that's the only risk that you actually have is their salary in the first two to four risk or weeks while they're just kind of beginning, and so. You can see the value um, kind of axis and how over time th the value is going to go up. And then the time that you're going to spend with a particular um, new virtual assistant or a new assistant in your business, the time in the beginning, it's, it's a lot of work up front. You've got to get them up to speed. You've got to get them an email. You've got to get them inside your systems and working. You've got to communicate the standards and pro uh, processes. I mean, you got to tell them what the vision and the values of the companies are. I mean, there's a lot of upfront work, but as this slide um, shows, that the time you've got to spend with them goes down. And we think that at 90 days, 90 days is a typical place where the value outpaces the time that you have to spend, and you're finally in, a, in some portion of a payback period where they're providing more value and you're spending less time with them. And just like Bob, like he just gives an outcome to his virtual assistant and then it just gets done because they're super accountable. Well, that doesn't happen in the first week, right? You've got to kind of get them up to speed. Um, and so this is this is that slide that helps that. What were you going to say, Bob? I just, I, 
like at, at this point, I've got things where, like, I don't even remember how to do them anymore. You know, <laughs> so I go to Noel and I'm like, "Hey, did I ever show you how to how to do the re-indexing on on the Google Webmasters?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I got it." You know, and I'm like, yeah. "Okay, phew," because I can't remember how to do it anymore. I thought I get I'd hand it over to you, but so there's a lot of stuff like that where now for me, like, he just he, he handles that stuff. So we're yeah. close to the. Let, let, let's do this. Run through the offers real quick. There's some really good questions in here I want to get to. We're almost at the top of the hour. So if you guys can hang tight for just a couple more minutes, go through the offers real quick, Daniel. And then yeah. um, a couple questions that I want to fire at you um, that I think are really, really super relevant. Sure. Um, so one thing, virtual operation guide, you're going to get this slide if you register for, you know, the free gifts at the end of this. And I'll go, I'm not going to go through it right now, but this is a big piece of how you, how you can become successful with a virtual assistant or a virtual professional, like we like to call them. Here's the learning frameworks. This is how you get somebody to the space that Bob is talking about, where he just gives an outcome and, and create master, mastery inside your business. Um, so everybody who's listening, we have, we have a bunch of partnerships. It's, it, we have this thing called business in a box. So if you, if you think you'd like to have somebody helping you with calls, we have a, a, an agreement with salesdialer.com where you get a three line dialer for free for 90 days. It's a huge deal. Um, we also are giving away agent circle prospecting. So if you decide to do Lisa's you know, prospecting thing where she calls the whole neighborhood, we've get, we're going to give you a free tool to do it. And these combined tools are about a 400 and, I don't know, $30 value. You get them free for 90 days when you hire a virtual assistant. We also have a CRM, Firepoint. It's a great, um, it's, it's just a great CRM. Um, they're going to waive their setup fee. It's a $300 value. So if you if you're thinking about like a transaction coordination or a CRM, somebody to manage your CRM so you can get referrals and, and, and business from your sphere, that's another opportunity. Land voice, this is a FISBO's expired neighborhood search, pre-foreclosure. Um, this is a $441 value, so you get a free pro account with Land Voice when you sign up for a virtual assistant. And you can get all these things for free. So we're basically providing a ton of value when you, when you sign up. We're also giving away, I, I shared one open house strategy um, and Lisa Archer's strategy to bring online marketing offline. And so we're gonna give you these five strategies for free. Um, they come with a checklist and a video of how to implement it. So you can actually train your virtual assistant how you'd like to do it in your, in your market, in your office and get them up to speed. There is work. It's not like we're giving you the strategies and then you don't have to do anything. You still need to bring them up to speed, understand what's going on. Um, and so all of these five strategies, all of the tools, everything that you need to be successful, and, and all you got to do is register for a discovery call to see if we're a good fit. And if we're not a good fit, no big deal. You're going to get a ton of value for free. Um, I like this, this slide. Um, I'm going to let you guys read it. It's, it's really a big deal. Tony Robbins, you need to model success. Um, and so all that R and D around here, right? Yeah. We rip off and duplicate. We rip off and duplicate people that have already done it and are doing it really well. Yeah, and so and this is the free consultation site, guys. If if and and again, your only risk is is the time that you're going to spend with this. It's working on your business rather than working in your business. We're going to give you the webs. Uh, all the webinar slides. We're going to give you uh, the job role checklist, so that you know exactly the job roles, and we're and, and we're just going to give you a ton of value just for coming to us and chatting. Myoutdesk.com forward slash active rain. That's our website. It's going to have I all. Put the, the, I put that in there for everybody in the chat. So if you look at your chat, you can click that link and have it to go back later. Um, all right. Look, can, can I ask a couple questions, Daniel? Yeah, yeah. It's the perfect time, and 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 we'll only go maybe five, ten more minutes. Okay. So um, Susan wants to know where are these virtual assistants at? That's a great question. Everybody that we have is in the Philippines. Um, I think we're at twelve hundred clients right now, fifteen hundred virtual assistants, right around that number. So, and again, you know, everybody that we hire, you're going to get a job description. You're going to get a um, you're going to get their resume. We're going to give you a video, so you're going to hear how what their speech looks like. We're going to give you writing examples. You're going to get everything up front, so you can choose whether this person would be a good hire for your company or not. I I, I want to because I think like how do I how do I say this so it doesn't sound offensive? 
<laughs> there, there's, this, there's this perception that if I hire a virtual assistant out of the Philippines, if they're not going to maybe represent my business, like their speech might be off some, I'm telling you guys, like all of the, all three of our virtual assistants, and we weren't even hired like calling virtual assistants, by the way, we were hiring admin virtual assistants, which I think would be a little bit different job description, right? All three of ours, or the ones that I deal with, we have many, many, but um, Sheree and, and Karen and Noel, they speak better English than I speak. And I don't even know if me saying speak better English than I speak is the proper way to say that, but <laughs> they do. And they write better English than I write. Like, and so I actually have Noel sometimes. I'll write something up really fast and I'll send it to him and say, hey, can you check this for me? So like from a skills perspective, on par with anybody we've ever hired in our building here in Bellingham. Um, well, and what's great about it too is we're, we're 17 uh, 47 a month. So it's not, it, you're, this is a mind blowing number for anybody who's really growing a team. Like if you're trying to get from half a million to a million dollars, what we charge is, is pennies and we pay our people, you know, just like doctors over there, we give them great um, health care. we give them vacation time. We're doing two conferences a year where we're getting together and giving them awards and loving on them and appreciating on them. I mean, guys, I, I this look when I started doing this it was 2007 so I hired my first one for my own real estate business in 2007 and I eventually had seven helping me close close to a million dollars in real estate and I had multiple businesses and, and multiple different roles but the reality was the reason I was able to grow from literally making a hundred grand a, a, a year to netting a million bucks was because I had virtual assistants so uh, and that's why I'm so passionate about this is that this is a game changer. In fact, our biggest challenge as a company is just people understanding that this is even a possibility for them. Like this is, this leverage option is actually open. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's Susan's my asked, passion. Susan's asking a few here and I'm going to answer them for you, Susan. Um, yes, they work in your time zone. So you set what time. So like I used to be in Arizona. And Noel and Karen and Cherie worked on my Arizona time, and then I moved to Washington, and they, they were nice enough to accommodate, and they switched, right? They switched by an hour. So they're working on your time. Um, yes, they're working exclusively for you. So I think, and I, I could be off the map here. I know you, you guys used to do or have like a 20-hour option. It was a little bit more expensive. You could have a, a virtual assistant for only 20 hours. And in that case, they would be working for you and someone else. But if you had a, the full 40 hours a week virtual assistant, Susan, they would exclusively be working um, on your business and, and no one else's, right, Daniel? Um, yeah, let me let me clarify. You know, we used to actually have part-time virtual assistants, and we, I don't know, maybe three months ago, actually went away from that because what we found was that people who were super serious about growing their business, people who were actually real estate professionals, like focused on growing a team, like part-time would just frustrate them because once they got one of our virtual assistants part-time and they taught them everything in, in like the 30, 60, 90 days, like then they said, I want them full-time. And we'd have, we'd have two different clients that yeah. love their VAs. And in fact, I just talked to somebody the other day. And so we're, we walked away from that whole process. We, we have full-time people. We're gonna, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to get you an outcome. We're going to figure out what it is you want done. And then we're going to find the best talent for that particular outcome, and we're just gonna crush it together. That's that's what we do. Kay says, when those open house invites are mailed, where are they postmarked? I mean, it, it's a service that she uses, right? So they're, they're definitely postmarked um, out of the US. Um, yeah, yeah. Z Zariah asked a great question. Do, do you guys have virtual assistants like that would maybe speak Spanish? You know, we do have a couple. In fact, um, it's it's not a big market that we're in. It's hard to find those, even though the Philippines was colonized by Spain for like, I don't know, two, 300 years. Um, it's wild how many people don't speak Spanish. They, they were colonized and then we, the U.S. set them free from that. And uh, as a country, they're like, we're, we don't want Spanish anymore. And so we've got a couple. It's not something that, that's part of our core competencies. Um, my my guess though is if you're in a Hispanic market and you're really killing it, um, you're going to need help on the admin side, um, and you're going to need a lot of help on the marketing side. So we can help on 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 those sides for those the language needs. 
But maybe if you just emailed Daniel every day, like, hey, get me a Spanish guy. A Spanish <laughs> come on, man, come on. They'd make it happen over there. One of the things that he didn't even talk about here, and, and I, I get that we're getting long, so if you got to go, hey, I get it. We'll, we'll have the full recording out to you. One of the things that you didn't mention here that I think is really cool is it's not just like you're giving me a virtual assistant and then you guys are walking away, right? Like your virtual assistants have access to training and different things where your team goes in and helps helps train my virtual assistant on the systems that I use. So like if I'm a Boomtown user, for example, like they can go take a class with some of your people where they can learn the ins and outs of Boomtown beyond what I would have, the time I would have been able to spend with them, right? Well, well yeah, and, and what I love about you mentioning Boomtown is I was a Boomtown you know, agent for years. We, we, I love Greer and the team over there. Uh, what is great, they have, not only do they have a playbook, like they have the Boomtown playbook, but they also have a ton of online videos and a ton of just, a, a, just a ton of education. So that when you work with a great company like Boomtown or Brivity or Active Rain, the community that, that we live in is everything is virtual, everything is online. What you have to do as the owner is, is create the outcomes, make sure it's clear when they need to be delivered, identify what it's going to take for you as the business owner to pay their paycheck every two weeks, right? That's what you're doing. What's the outcome that's going to make it worth it for me to pay every two weeks, every two, every, for the rest of my career? And then, you know, we'll, we'll walk through like what that training needs to look like to get them up to speed. Um, but what's great is the world is so deep right now in training that our folks are just proactive about going out and getting it. We do have subject matter experts that can help bring them up to speed. But honestly, when you work with a great company, all of that stuff is available via the web. Yeah. Somebody asked, like, do I have to provide my own scripts? And maybe, like, I just literally typed in uh, Ben Kinney scripts you guys have a page on your website that has a bunch of Ben Kinney scripts on it, including like an open house script, a circle prospecting script, um, yeah. a three goal script for active clients. Like there's also scripts. Like, I don't think you guys are providing scripts, right? I mean, you, you want the agent to be invest, invested in that. And, but guys scripts, I mean, that's a big time R and D, right? Rip off and duplicate somebody like Ben who's using scripts highly effectively in his, in his business and literally typing Ben Kinney scripts into Google. I found a page on my out desk that has a bunch of links to different types of scripts that, that Ben has in his business. And there's YouTube videos of guys like Ben, you know, delivering their scripts and these kinds of things. So um, yeah, you, would you need to provide them, but. You know what's more important is, and, and people always think scripts, oh, what are they gonna say to get me the business? Like that's important. But even a calling prospecting kind of virtual assistant, what, what you're going to do is you need the biggest fail in our industry, and we just did a webinar last week on this, but the biggest fail is the agent or the broker not recording the calls and providing coaching. Like, and just real quick, if you're thinking about the, the, the prospecting virtual assistants, what you do is you record the calls, you randomly select two or three, you have them then on a Google Doc type out what was said, and then you ask them to, to correct it, like, I want you to go through this and actually self-correct, like where you could have said something different. And then when once they do it, you spend 20 or 30 minutes role-playing with them around that exact call, give them feedback, and that's a piece of uh, – that that is the most valuable thing you can do when you hire somebody, anybody, to do prospecting for you. On top of that, you have to have a daily huddle. You should have a weekly meeting where you're including your virtual assistant. They need to know the team. They need to know, and what, whether it's a calling or an admin or a marketing, they need to know the people on your team. They need to have a relationship with the people on their team, and they need to know who they need to go to when they have questions or concerns, and you need to give them that space because one of the biggest challenges that we have is that our clients are very direct and quick and fast like Bob and I, you know, a little crazy all over the place. And, and the virtual assistant or the virtual professional is going, well, who do I ask when I have a question? And we don't have time for them. You've got to give them an avenue to have a coach. You probably had a coach to teach you or a mentor or somebody to teach you the real estate business. You have to act like that for your real estate, for your virtual professional, for the virtual assistant who you're going to hire. You've got to give them an avenue to, to learn. So uh, uh, Raul says, I, I'm going to answer two more questions and then we're going to, we're going to shut it down. If, if you guys want to, I mean, go to myoutdesk.com slash active rain, do the, 
you know, get the consulting call with them and, and they'll be able to answer every single question you could ever think of. But Raul says, are they able to call my pay-per-click leads within five minutes? Raul, if you have a system in your business that's able to deliver that lead to that, yes. If you had a, a, a mark or a, 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 one of the calling virtual assistants, absolutely. Granted, they still have a time frame. They work, you know, that you're eight hours, right? And so outside of that, maybe you'd shut the campaign down or something if you didn't want to generate leads during that time. That would be my encouragement to you because if you're running your campaigns all night long, you, them, nobody's going to answer them at one in the morning. Nobody's going to make those calls anyway, right? So, but yeah, granted that you have a system, a CRM that's delivering leads and, and notifying them, absolutely they can do that. 40-hour work week, yeah, it's a 40-hour work week. Um, and, and they're dedicated to your business and, and you're gonna, you know, we've taught, you're gonna train them, you're gonna show them your processes, you're gonna give them your scripts, you're gonna work with them, right? This is not just set it and forget it, right? Like that doesn't exist anywhere in the business world where I just get something new, some new piece of talent to my business and I go, there you go, like have at it, good luck, right? I mean, that, that's gonna be a failure for you, it's gonna be a failure for them. Um, but, you know, granted that you're in there and you're vested in their success because their success is your success, you're gonna you're gonna be able to to solve all these challenges that people are asking questions about. Yeah, and Daniel, uh, we just scratched on the surface. I just want to reinforce this. Like, what we just did is gave you almost a decade worth of virtual assistant experience in a one hour clip. So if if you have any curiosity, any thoughts, jump on the website, go to this landing page, fill it out, get the free stuff, and then t chat with our people, and uh, it it'll change your world. I promise. Hey, Daniel, um, like a big thank you to you for, for kind of bringing this concept to the real estate industry because in our business, it's helped a ton, like you said, and, and I kind of started this thing off with, like these people are family to us, you know, like it hurt my heart when Noel's mom passed away. And so like you guys are doing a great thing over there. We appreciate the heck out of it. Um, I know Ben's, he just walked in here and was like, hey, Daniel. Uh, but he, they, <laughs> they, they couldn't operate without this, like my mom's doing such amazing job in Ben's business right now. They had to get her her own virtual assistant because she, she was even crushing like the help they have on the team already. So she's got a dedicated one. I mean, th this um, is a, just a great outlet to create leverage in your business. And if you want to take your business to that next level, somebody, will, and somebody said, I have 25 deals. I did uh, 5 million last year. And um, can somebody reach out to me? And she gave us their email. We'll reach out to you. But if you, if you want to take your business to that next level, leverage is the way you're going to do it. Um, there's a roadmap to do this. My outdesk can help give it to you. Daniel, thanks, man. I appreciate the heck out of you being here today. Bob, it was my pleasure, man. Have a great day, and thanks for joining us on this webinar. You too, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. You guys have an awesome rest of your week in real estate. Um, on behalf of Daniel, and he's got a team of folks behind the, behind the curtain here for my outdesk. Thanks to them. My name's Bob Stewart. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Daniel.